All right, now I want to speak about the dancing. When I was watching this show, a lot of the people around me were a little bit shocked at what was happening on stage. I think they didn't know what to expect. Tell me about developing those scenes and and coming up with those extreme and provocative dance moves. Sure, I, I think because of what Cliff's character would have experienced in 1930s Berlin, there would have been this element of shock, um, I think. And I think in order to translate what he would have felt to an audience today, mm -hmm. I mean, I think one has to almost elevate the shock yeah. factor a little bit. So there is that sense of um, massive sexual energy, shock value, and the dancing. I mean, Louisa, Louisa choreographed some epic dances, a lot of which I'm not involved in, thankfully, because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'll, le I'll leave the dancing to the pros there. Makes but me tired. I mean, we, yeah, I'm, we, we, we're very lucky to have somebody like Louisa. You know, Louisa is still a young and upcoming choreographer, Louisa Talbot, and uh, the one thing about it is that she understands music. She's got incredible musicality, so she hears music, and as opposed to sort of kind of going, I'm just going to choreograph four counts of eight, she listens to the music and she choreographs the music, so the two really do that, and, and, it, and it's brilliant to sort mm. of perform her stuff, no matter how badly I do it, but in any case, it's just great <laughs> to sort of have that opportunity. And Matthew Wilde, the director also, his, his vision was very clear from the, from the word go, and that's why also the show starts and ends a little different to the traditional cabaret. Um, in terms that we, 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 we are reminded as an audience that this is actually based on Cliff's experience of the period. It's a book that he went and wrote. He wrote, and this is true to life, it was uh, happened for real. He went and he wrote it and he said, you know, I'm a camera. I'm open, my shutter's always open, I'm just taking it. So Matthew wanted to give the audience that experience of what would it have been like. Because we all know when you experience something and years later you look back, you forget about the bad stuff, if it was a good experience, you forget yeah. about the bad stuff, the, the times that you're bored, or you, you just remember the good stuff, and everything was like, oh my goodness, I can't ever repeat that, that was just brilliant. Same goes for bad. You know, you, were only, you, you forget that there was actually some life at the end of the tunnel, you just see the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. So what Louisa managed to do is, is, is exaggerate and explode mm. that sense of what it is about, and the, and the choreography sort of like, is just enlarged, mm. which is hard. <laughs> on the bodies and it's hard in sort of just maintaining it and, and, and keeping it fresh every night and it takes a hell of a lot of energy. I mean like you, you would you would you want to actually see the performers as they come off stage sometimes. Did anyone get injured? I mean I was uh, thinking oh. I was kicked unconscious at one stage. What? Yes. <laughs> yeah. We had an I unconscious MC. Day, yeah. Um, yeah. Many bruises, yeah. many kicks and heads and it's yeah, it's it's, but it's, it's the nature it's of the beast. Of it, you know? yeah. I mean, like, for example, the kick line at the beginning of Act 2 uh, is sort of like, you know, you're doing it in heels, and I've got five, how many are we in the kick line? We're seven, I think. But yeah, there's six girls who are trained dancers, and we're doing a kick line which is supposed to be uniform. I can't get my leg up where they can get it. You know? So there's this constant, like, oh my goodness, can I just get my leg up higher, you know? And, but Louise is so great because she mm. will look at you and your yeah. abilities and then work around that. Mm. You know, she will never... Force. She will push you, but she mm -hmm. will never sort of make you something that you really can't do, you know. So, yeah, all hail to Louisa and Matt for that. Yeah, yeah. And the ensemble for doing it every night. I mean, mm. geez, there's some incredible energy going on there. Has anything really um, that wasn't supposed to happen happened <laughs> on stage since, since you've started? <laughs> Yeah, well, n the nature of the beast of live theatre is that there are so many variables that could change every night. Charles was talking about the energy of the performers and maybe a prop might not be where you quite expect it or a set piece might not work. And we have had a couple of interesting... I had a costume malfunction where my dress wouldn't stay up and... Oh, that's fun. Daniel <laughs> ended up taping it to me, which was very nice of him. That is very nice of him. And just props ending up in the wrong places and doors opening when they shouldn't, but that's the beauty of live theatre. I was there when the door was open. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, and was, yeah. mechanical glitches and... But you know, it's a, the beauty of things like that, when it goes wrong, it's like you, 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 you concentrate so hard on doing the right thing and you've got to focus on it. Something goes wrong, you don't even think about it. You're so concerned about fixing that thing on the side that your performance just happens. Mm -hmm. 
I remember with um, uh, one performance where we had a problem with the truck, and we had <laughs> we had our pr executive producer standing in the wings. We were about to like the paddles are about to open. He's talking. He says like, okay, if the wagon doesn't move, I'm gonna go like this, and we're all going. But the paddles are gonna open. We won't be able to see you. And literally, he's like talking to us, and we're all talking <laughs> to him. And the next moment, the paddles open, and we're all like. <laughs> but the audience will never know like the stuff that happens and, yeah. and, and it's the adrenaline level that sort of carry you through that stuff and mm -hmm. an audience, yeah, the audience should never know either uh, but it's just amazing that obviously things are gonna in any environment things happen that you don't plan on and that's what makes it exciting yeah. as well I've fallen off the stage before <gasps> <laughs> wow and that's not funny no, no, it wasn't funny <laughs> have you been back on stage or <laughs> it was a long time ago <laughs> No, it was really yeah. hilarious. I've kicked myself off my feet and landed flat on my backside, and you know, that happens. You drop out of lifts, and yeah. <laughs> now you can laugh about it at least. <laughs> no, Claire, tell me what is the favorite part in the play for you? Your favorite part, without a doubt, singing cabaret, mm -hmm. the title song. Um, it's oh, it's such a. I, I've used this expression before, but it gives me the feels. It's just, I, I love that also um, the way that Sally is, I, she, I don't think she take, really has a very pretty voice or I don't think she's incredibly talented. So th there isn't that sort of pressure of sing it like a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. That song is just gut-wrenching and it's feeling and, it, and I just, that's my favorite part, singing that song. Good Hands choice. down. Yeah. Charles, your favorite part? Yeah, I don't actually, I was just thinking now, I, I don't actually have a, a favorite part. I think, you know, the, the journey is so sort of, for me personally, it's just so such a line through and trying to kind of bits and bobs and things. But I think the moments that I, I get to spend with, with, with the ensemble on stage are just incredible because they really, really are just the most supportive cast ever. And they, uh, you just feel the energy when the, when you're on mm -hmm. stage with them. You know, when you do a song like Money, or there's just that incredible sense of we're all telling one story here, yeah. even though it's dancing or singing or whatever it may be. It's, it's they, they are, they're a very, very strong group of people to have around mm. you the whole time. It really is incredible, and I urge everyone watching to go out and see Cabaret. Tell us how we can get tickets, where we go to see it, and how long you're going to be there. We're playing at the Fugal Theatre mm -hmm. in Cape Town. And tickets from CompuTicket or the box office at, box office at the theatre. Yeah. We're running until the end of May. Um, and um, you can book online as well. You can go also onto the Few Gods website, which is uh, fewgod.com. I don't know. <laughs> I'm making this up. It makes sense to me. And I, I'm sure it's, it's fewgod.com is the website. I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. And um, But there's information to be found everywhere. You just mm, go the Facebook people. page. Um, the Fugard Theatre's got a Facebook page, there's the Cabaret Facebook page, Fugard on Twitter, they're constantly putting out no, very information. Good and social media. Mm, yeah. yeah, so there is lots of information and tickets are going. Like, I mean, yeah. this week is sold out, last week was sold out, so get Amazing. them fast. Well, good luck on the rest of the run and thank you both for coming in. Thank, thank you so you. much for having us. Thank you. Thank you.